This is Twit. Uh, last week, you probably heard about it. A ransomware attack hit the Colonial Pipeline, self-proclaimed America's energy lifeline, if that tells you anything about the importance of this pipeline. That has since increased the price of gasoline pretty significantly. I've definitely noticed it and served as yet another warning sign of just how vulnerable uh, important infrastructure is to these kinds of attacks. And joining us to talk about what exactly happened Kind of what to expect going forward as well is Roger Chang from CNET. It's been a while. Welcome back to the show, Roger. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always great to get you on. I appreciate your time. Uh, and this story is super important. We've been talking about it on uh, on the network all week long. But let's kind of get your take on this. First of all, detail a little bit exactly how this attack uh, took place last week. What were the what like what happened exactly? Yeah, so we don't have the specific details of the attack itself. I, I imagine some of those details will come out uh, after a bit of time and some research uh, or some digging into. But we know that Colonial Pipeline was hit with uh, ransomware, which is software that essentially will lock up your computer uh, and hold it hostage. So you have to pay a ransom to unlock the data that's been been pilfered. Uh, and as a precaution, because the data was taken and the, the systems were shut down, they had to freeze the pipelines and cease operations. So they proactively did that. Uh, obviously, that's causing, causing a huge ripple effect that we're continuing to see today with the, with the gas no longer flowing through this major, major artery in the country, uh, you're starting to see a bit of a supply crunch with, uh, with gas uh, really around the East Coast and particularly in the South. Yeah, and I was even seeing, you know, those photos passed around on social media of people, you know, get kind of, it really reminded me of uh, when the pandemic started, you know, the lockdown started to intensify and everybody was going out and, you know, buying all of the toilet paper. This time it was gasoline. It seemed like people were filling up plastic bags with gasoline, you know, ch trunks filled with all of these jugs full of gasoline. I guess gas hoarding. Uh, was that even a, ne a necessary action uh, by people? in essence? Well, well no, and I there think that go. was the big issue. I think the, uh, yeah, looking at that photo, um, I yeah, I just realized the idea oh. of storing gas in a plastic bag was a thing <laughs> that people did. Um, this, <laughs> The comparison to the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic was very apt. Uh, you know, this is a sense of, this is a normal, it was a normal supply chain that was actually, kind of, that was working normally, yeah. but because of the panic buying, because of the the hoarding, it has caused a sort of sort of a self fulfilling prophecy here, where uh, people were freaked out about a possible shortage, went out to buy gas and buy more gas than they should have, and thus causing the shortage. So you saw a number of officials, state officials, federal officials, uh, go out and say, just buy your gas as you normally would, as you would normally need it. Don't hoard because that's that's been the real issue, um, and it's been an issue we've seen. It sort of cascaded down really uh, along the East Coast gas stations throughout this area. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, don't know how long it's going to take to recover on that on that front, but I know uh, we'll probably all want it to recover sooner rather than later. We'll see what happens. Uh, in the meantime, um, reporting has shown that Colonial. Um, paid close to $5 million in order to decrypt its computers after this attack. And I know like, you know, uh, security professionals often, what I hear about ransom atta ransomware attacks is that, hey, if, you know, it's probably not a good idea to pay the ransom, but I suppose if you have to in order to get that data, you have to. There's also conflicting reports that say that they were um, restoring backed up data as well, or maybe that's all happening concurrently. Any confirmation on exactly what's what's happened there, what their response was to this ransomware attack? So we're still getting those conflicting reports, and, and there isn't really a, uh, a clear indication of what's happened. It might be a little bit of both, but we're, at this point, it's it's still unclear. The company hasn't said much about how it's dealt with that response specifically. Um, it's you know it's a, it's a difficult situation when you're when you are a victim of ransomware. Um, oftentimes, you know, if you've seen this before, cities, hospital networks, uh, you know, agencies, companies with lots of seats, you know, the, the diff it's the difference between, you know, paying this ransom and continuing your business, and in, in some cases, continuing some critical work, whether like at the hospital or municipal government. Uh, and oftentimes, you will see uh, these uh, people pay, the victims pay to unlock their systems because it just is 
uh, unfortunately, it's easier and faster to get things working again uh, than, than fighting it. And I know that sort of goes against some of the recommendations that uh, law enforcement officials have, uh, have put out there. But uh, the reality is for a lot of these businesses, they need to get back online as quickly as possible. And for better or worse, paying that ransom is the, you know, the, the easiest path forward oftentimes. Yeah, I mean they have a business, and uh, the you know, and, and everything rides on their ability to to operate uh, effectively. So I have to imagine, like I can't even, I can't even put myself in that position to be so uh, susceptible and vulnerable in that moment, and yet have to make the decision. Shoot, do we actually pay and hope? Because there's no guarantee that when you pay, you're actually still mm-hmm. going to get you know, the ability to decrypt any of that data. You're kind of crossing your fingers. And when you're talking about millions of dollars on the line, that's an impossible decision to make at that point. I don't fault anyone for you know, kind of hedging their bets as far as that's concerned. Uh, it's pretty intense. Um, it, now, what to what capacity are is the facility back up and running? Because I know we've seen that you know things are kind of moving uh, full board back at this point, or or kind of in stages. Not quite full board back. They did they did sort of restart things uh, yesterday yesterday afternoon fairly early, and today they sent out a couple updates uh, that they are expecting to be able to deliver uh, gas to all markets. Not necessarily at full capacity yet. I don't think they're going to be back to normal for a couple of days. But the the good sign is that I think they've gotten most of the lines up, uh, or they should have most of the lines up by the end of the day. I think when I checked in this morning, there was still a, sort of a critical line, um, sort of the northern part of this this artery that wasn't still that wasn't so operational yet. But they had expected it to open up sometime today. Yeah. All right. Now, um, timed with this, it seems anyways, President Biden uh, signed an executive order uh, seemingly in the shadow of this event. Uh, I don't know how directly related it is to it, but what exactly does it call for that might impact events like this in the future? Because something tells me this is, I mean, we've already, you know, seen enough of this to have an indication that this is not the end of the road for ransomware attacks of this scale. Like, what what is that executive order detail? Yeah, so what the executive order detail was really more cooperation between government agencies and private companies and, and really sort of higher standards for the security implementations that are being put on on anything uh, or any business that is working with government agencies, so it's not you know this is this is definitely not a solution to this problem. I think it's it's much larger, and uh, we really have to take a look at sort of our aging um, IT infrastructure across you know both private and government agencies. But you know this is definitely a step in the right direction, um, and it's hopefully going to encourage more best practices when it comes to security and securing the you know the, the IT infrastructure around some of the more critical parts of our nation's uh, operations. Yeah, and that right there just seems to be the, the the crux of it all, right? Like these systems were built however many years ago, not with this sort of attack or this sort of vulnerability in mind, yet here we are. And how do we encourage these, you know, the, this uh, the systems built around such critical infrastructure to be updated to a point to where they can survive or can prevent or protect themselves from attacks like this and other ones that, you know, we haven't even heard of yet that haven't even happened. Who knows what the future holds as far as that's concerned? What do you think this means for infrastructure going forward? Because, you, you know, CNET also wrote an article about uh, the power grid, the U.S. power grid and the threats faced there and what that impact could be. I mean, it's major. What do you think this means for infrastructure going forward? Well, obviously, President Biden has made infrastructure a big part of his uh, his campaign or his initiative uh, in the first hundred days as president. So I'm hoping the investment there, the investment in uh, all manners of infrastructure, includes language or includes some component that uh, that talks about sort of IT infrastructure, software upgrades, security upgrades from a cybersecurity perspective. And it's not just physical improvements that we're getting and that that when we're thinking about sort of upgrading all of our critical systems, that we're thinking holistically and not just, you know, building back bridges or repairing bridges and patching up roads, but but actually having sort of a a more comprehensive look that includes software and security, and like for a lot of these, uh, a lot of these systems, making sure just 
simply that they're on uh, up-to-date operating systems, that they're using right. up-to-date software with all the right security patches. Because oftentimes that's really just the case, that they're, they happen to be vulnerable because they've got outdated software. And there's probably an easy fix that people have just overlooked because it, it, doesn't, it isn't a priority until it's a crisis. 